All right, let's do some glorious ultra-wide gaming, but at what cost? In this video, we're gonna take a look at how much harder is it to drive ultra-wide resolutions compared to standard 16 by nine resolutions. We're gonna look at how many more pixels are you actually driving? And then how does that play out in some actual gaming benchmarks? Now, I happen to be a math teacher, which means I can summon a calculator with the snap of my fingers. Okay, now on this calculator, we can see some monitor resolutions. For example, your normal 16 by nine 1080p, like this uh, older monitor I have up here, is running at 1920 by 1080. And if you multiply those together, that's how many pixels are on the screen. Cause that's just, you know, the area of a rectangle, huh? Math genius, right? Anyway, <laughs> so you get around 2 million pixels. But if we uh, did 1080p ultra wide, you'd be at a 21 by nine aspect ratio. And that's gonna add some more pixels to each end of the screen. So you get everything the 1080p monitor does with a little bit extra. Okay, so how many more pixels does that get you? Well, it gets you more, which makes it harder for your GPU to run. But how does that compare with 1440p? Because in a lot of benchmarks, what you're gonna see, and that's, that's what I'm really trying to address with this video, is us ultra-wide gamers are such a small segment of the market that a lot of times when you look up graphics card reviews, you're gonna see 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. You're not gonna see ultra-wide ultra -wide resolutions to see how your gaming would go if you're trying to run an ultra-wide monitor, if you're thinking about upgrading to an ultra-wide monitor. And like I said, we're gonna address that. So let's do 2560 by 1440 and see what that gets us. Okay, then we could also do ultra wide 1440p, which is the actual monitor that I'm running right here. And that gets us quite a bit more pixels. We're closing in on 5 million pixels now. But how does that compare to 4K? Because again, 4K is something that you're gonna get to see a lot of in the benchmarks that you might look up. Well, 4K, is around 8 million pixels. That's a lot more pixels. So what can we gather from this? Well, it turns out that basically, if you look at 1080p and 1440p, your ultra wide 1080p should fall somewhere in between those two pixel values, right? So your performance should fall somewhere in between, although not in the exact center. And then we should also see 1440p and 4K split the difference kind of between the ultra wide 1440p, although again, it's not the exact middle. But the idea here is just judging by the pixel counts, you should now be able to look up just some random game benchmarks or GPU benchmarks and get an idea for where your ultra wide performance is gonna be. If you're gaming at 1440p ultra wide, look at how the card does at 1440p and how it does at 4K and roughly average those results. Now, is it really as simple as that? Actually, game by game, you can get different results. So as you can see here, I'm running a Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark. And this is at ultra settings at my ultra wide. But I've also ran this benchmark at 1080p, 1080p ultra wide, normal 1440p, and at 4K. I've also done the same things for Shadow of the Tomb Raider at all of those resolutions, and we can compare some results.
As you can see, in Shadows of the Tomb Raider, this actually lines up pretty closely with what we were hoping to see based on our pixel count. Our 1080p and our 1440p surround the performance of the 1080p ultra wide and our 1440p and our 4k performance surround the uh, values for the 1440p ultra wide now again they're not exactly in the center but if you're using those estimates like i suggested it should get the job done now we can also take a look at the red dead redemption 2 scores and you'll notice that this one isn't quite as clean the 1080p ultra wide and the 1440p are actually pretty close here. It's not splitting the difference exactly. And I don't know exactly why that was the case when I ran these benchmarks, but it was the case. So just take into account the fact that using the pixel count to predict the results for any particular game isn't going to be perfect, but it is gonna give you a pretty good idea so that if you're like me gaming on an ultra wide monitor and you go look up a new GPU review and you're like, yeah, but what does that mean for me? Well, now you have a better idea of what it means for you. Kinda of average the performance um, either between 1080p and 1440p if you're on the 1080p ultra wide or between the 1440p and the 4K uh, if you're on that 1440p ultra wide. And if you're considering upgrading to an ultra wide monitor, that would give you a good idea of how your current GPU can actually perform at those settings. Now, another thing just in general when looking at results and looking up reviews though, is to consider how you know, an average frame rate doesn't tell you the whole story because my frame rate will certainly dip below the average. And if you're trying to lock in that 60 where 60 is more of a minimum, like your 1% minimums, you do want to uh, take a look at those as well. Overall, is it worth it? Well, when a game's supporting it beautifully, it is wonderful. But support of games is a whole other issue. Uh, which I plan to make some future videos about, but I've already made a video in the past where that is one of the subjects I talk about. And if you're interested in more of my thoughts on ultra wide, you could take a look at this video I made several months back about my thoughts on upgrading to ultra wide and is it actually better? Anyway, thank you for watching the video. If you're interested in other tech related content, especially focused on PC and gaming hardware, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thank you to my current subscribers. You are all beautiful people. I read every comment, so leave, leave comments and I'll reply to as many as I can. I hope you all have an excellent day. But at what cost? But at what cost? But at what cost? But at what cost?